Welcome back. Today we're continuing in the Early Church Father series, and today we'll discuss Ignatius of Antioch and what his importance was in the early church and even now. Ignatius was born in roughly 30 to 35 AD in the Roman province of Syria. To be specific, it was Antioch. Not much is recorded of the early life of Ignatius, but we do know he became a Christian quite early into life, as when he got into his late 20s or early 30s, he became a bishop of Antioch by command of the Apostle Peter, Peter being the bishop of Antioch before Ignatius was enrolled. As well, a later tradition that might not be reliable says that Ignatius was the boy placed upon Jesus' knee in Matthew chapter 18, verse 2. As mentioned earlier, Ignatius is tied to the Apostle Peter, as it was Peter who instituted Ignatius as Bishop of Antioch. Eusebius of Serza records this event as such in his church history. Ignatius, sole famed name as second after Peter to succeed to the bishopric of Antioch. Based on this account alone, we can get an idea of the trust Peter is placing into the hands of Ignatius. This almost guarantees us the apostolic teaching Ignatius carries. A little bit later, Jerome of Stridon records Ignatius' connection to John the Apostle as well. John the Apostle survived all the way to the time of Trajan, after whom his notable disciples were Papias, Bishop of Heropolis, Polycarp of Smyrna, and Ignatius of Antioch. Around 107 AD, Ignatius of Antioch was sentenced to death, and from Antioch he was transported to Rome. During this period of time, Ignatius wrote seven letters. Six of them were to the Christian churches, and the last of them was to his friend Polycarp. In the letters written to the various churches, such as the church in Rome, Ephesus, and even Smyrna, Ignatius talks about the idea of always being united. The churches in general should always follow the lead of the bishop in their specific areas, and should not break away. Ignatius also teaches that one has to always be righteous and should follow the footsteps of Christ and his apostles, such as Paul. In one of his letters, Ignatius even attacks the heresy of Docetism. These were Gnostics who believed that Jesus did not actually come in the flesh. Ignatius says this about them in his letter to the Shemurnians. And he, Jesus, truly suffered as he also truly raised himself up. Not as some unbelievers say, his suffering was in appearance only. Like I said, Ignatius also writes to his friend Polycarp. In accordance with tradition, Polycarp is also said to have been a disciple of the Apostle John. If you'd like to know more about Polycarp, I made a video about him in the description below. Ignatius of Antioch tells Polycarp that as bishop, he should always take care of those who suffer in his church, such as widows and slaves of the Roman Empire. Ignatius as well tells Polycarp to be careful of heresy. He says this, those who appear to be trustworthy, yet teach strange doctrines, do not let them amaze you, stand firm. As I mentioned earlier, Ignatius of Antioch was found guilty of being a Christian in Antioch and was inevitably sentenced to death. He was forcibly brought to Rome to suffer this death, and this happened under the reign of Emperor Trajan in 107 AD. During this trip to Rome, Christians in Rome tried to stop his martyrdom in order to save his life. In his letter to the Romans, he tells them not to hinder his death. He says this, May I enjoy the beasts that have been made ready for me, and I pray they might deal with me speedily. In this quote, Ignatius accepts this martyr's death, and he sees that by doing this, he is following in the footsteps of Christ and the apostles, who as well suffered a similar death. Now we don't know exactly what happened to Ignatius, but his friend Polycarp confirms his martyrdom in the 130s AD. Polycarp says this to the Philippians, Therefore I urge all of you to obey the word of righteousness, and to practice endurance to the limit, which also you saw with your own eyes not only in the blessed Ignatius and Zosimus and Rufus, but also in others from your own number, and in Paul himself and the other apostles. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy the series, please give a like and subscribe, and as always, God bless.